Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the latest episode in the What's in My Bookcase series. And in case you can't tell, <laughs> this week is going to solely be featuring dictionaries. Now, I don't know that my poor ironing board can hold all this weight, to be honest. And I don't even have them all on here. This, I have two, well, two bound dictionaries like this. So I would say that spine is six inches. And this one is a 1943. Beautiful end papers. The other one, I just looked at the date, is 1947. So this one that is without its cover, I'm going to get this out of the way that is without its cover, I bought, I think, for two bucks at a garage sale. Now you can see, I don't, to be honest, I don't know how, this one maybe was bigger because, I mean, this shows all the signatures. I've long since removed the cover because it had water damage. And you can see that it's got these posts that go through it you know, so that if a person wanted to get pages out without tearing them out, you'd have to use the screwdriver and unscrew the the uh, post. So, um, you know, sometimes we get books that, that do have that scent about them. I kind of let this one air out for the longest time. I would just open it to different pages. And now I use it when I need some big dictionary pages or, um, if I can find any, when I'm pressing some leaves. I see more down here. Anyway, um, I'll get this out of the way and we'll get into the nitty gritty. <clears throat> so this morning as I was, and I hope I got them all, this morning, as I was getting myself ready to do this, I kind of sorted the dictionaries into themes. And I am convinced that I don't have them all here yet, but enough to cert certainly give you a good... Sorry, I'm just trying to... This is such a dumb holder here. Anyway... <clears throat> So, you know, there are these sort of novelty type dictionaries, not a true dictionary in the sense that you're going to get, uh, you know, definitions or anything. But uh, I know somewhere I've got a Scrabble dictionary because, of course, that used to be the thing, you know, actual board games before things like Words with Friends and, and games on our phones. So this you know, has some appeal to it, again, just because of the way it's laid out, the two narrow columns, the bolded uh, word, and then the others that is less so. This is not a dictionary, but it's a th thesaurus. Look at that beautiful thing. You know, I have to say, oh, no, nope, scratch that. I can't say. <laughs> This, let's see, this book is one of those, okay, first published in Great Britain in 52, revised in 71, and this edition is 1982. And, you know, it is mint. It is pristine. Has anyone ever cracked this thing open? I don't think so. But look at the lovely color of the pages. And because it's a thesaurus, say that five times fast, it, um, you know, is laid out a little, the pages look a little different than a typical dictionary page. Okay, what else have we got here? Um, what I started to say with that book, because I thought it was a Reader's Digest book, is, yeah, kind of have to give Reader's Digest credit for a lot of the really nice books that they have put out over the years. So I hope you can see that this cover is embossed with the entire alphabet. 
Now, this is my dictionary that I've had for, well, let's see how long I've had it. Papery thin, papery thin paper. Well, I haven't had it since 66. Let's say I probably got it in the 70s. The latest date on here is 75. It's got the little, the little tabs with the alphabetical indicate. Oh, I wonder why this is wrinkly. This too looks like I never, <clears throat> never cracked it open to look up a word. <laughs> but um, again, really a nice book, and I can see it probably has a. Two, two and a half inch spine or so, wouldn't that make a great book? I mean, I'm not prepared to cut it up, but hey. Now this one is the Dictionary of Literary Biography, English and American. So nice little, you know, embossed design on the cover, uh, an ex libris, uh, I sure hope I didn't pay $10, um, an ex libris label there. And do we find, have a date here somewhere? 1958. So again, even though it's a dictionary, it is not what you would typically expect with the two, two or three columns. And uh, so this is based on, this is alphabetical by author's last names. So that is not the only specialty dictionary I have have um okay let's do this pile this is a gorgeous little book it's a medical dictionary it feels like a leather cover and let's see the date somebody's written 1950 can't tell is that a 1951 but let's really see a uh, dictionary of principal terms used in medicine, nursing, pharmacy, dentistry, veterinary science, and allied biological. Okay, the latest, oh, copyright 1898 was the first version. And then 1950, well, this was, I guess, reprinted in 55. So can you imagine what a leap there was in those uh, 50, you know, 55, 50, 60 years between the first publication and the second. And how inadequate this one would be based on what we know today. So some tables, really lovely, silky feeling paper. Um, I don't know if you, if you gave me a symptom, I could look it up, but... I guess in the absence of that, we just have to keep going here. So more table, a table of the veins. Okay. Hmm. Love the feel of this book. This is one that, <laughs> this is how I bought it. It's in sad shape, but I know a lawyer who's sort of, um, I would consider a Renaissance man. He actually sent me a condolence letter with a seal on it. Like, pretty classy. Um, anyway, he's a lawyer, and I thought, boy, if I ever do a masculine junk journal, I want him to have it. So this one um, never did have a cover. And basically, it is, you know, just legal terms defined. Oh, I was going to look for, oh, 76. That's kind of in sad shape. <coughs> this one has a dust jacket. That's kind of a nice looking book. Okay, a dictionary for medical secretaries. So I guess these would be the people that transcribe the records. Uh, okay, what have we got here? This one, 1960. <laughs> Dedicated my mother who tells me can't isn't in the dictionary. Well, sounds like a wise woman. 
I know I've said that as well. Thrombosis. This is structured more. Oh, you know what? Where would it be though? A hundred years ago, I was an EMT, emergency medical technician. So we had, mind you, maybe it wasn't a real dictionary, but we had a module that was on medical terminology. That's how I know that itis means inflammation. So prefixes and suffixes all indicate something. Anyway, this one is in various states of uh, disrepair, obviously. I think I took the cover off because sometimes you want a dictionary page that's about this size. So no idea what this is because... Um, why is there pronunciation of proper names? Huh, that's kind of cool. Anyway, um, yeah, several pages are missing. This is just a very generic, um, you know, this is a workhorse of a dictionary. I think someone gave this to me. <clears throat> uh, 2006, so it's soft cover. I mean, it's fairly thick, but bright white paper. And a different, a more like a sans serif font on it. So anyway, for whatever that's worth. Okay, let me bring in a few more piles here. So this one is, oh, foreign language. Now, okay, it says, for traveling, reading, conversation, and school use. Um, German English. Oh, <laughs> German English. Hey. Um, can we find a date? 1912. Ooh, that's a good one. So... It's got that gothic type of font. Now you'd think the back half. Oh, just a minute. So where's the, where is the English part? Typically when they, when they lay it out that the way that page did, you'd end up with half the book. Oh, we've got some damage back here. You'd have half the book with the, you know, in this case, German first, English, um, you know, equivalent, and then the rest of the book would be English first, and then the uh, German equivalent. But none of this... Anyway, can't solve that mystery by myself. Okay, now this one, Esperanto. So that would be Spanish, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, is Esperanto a, the Edinburgh Esperanto Pocket Dictionary? I don't know that, what that is. 1964. I'm sorry, I cannot explain this to you. The British Esperanto Association. <clears throat> the World Auxiliary Language. Okay, I'll just randomly pick uh, something here. 
Any sort of international conference becomes a wearisome waste of time and temper as different remarks are tra translated into various, various official languages. No real and ready exchange of thought is possible without a common language which all can understand and use, as is the case at the Universal Esperanto Congresses held annually. Why not let everyone learn English? Well, many foreigners won't just as many English-speaking fo folks won't learn French and German and Spanish. Others can't, either because they're not linguists and English is not an easy subject to pick up in a few lessons or because their lives are too short. So on and on. Um, the essentials, and again, I'm just skipping from place to place here. The essentials of such an international or auxiliary language are that it should be easy to learn and to speak, simple in pronunciation and grammar, and perfectly clear in its meaning, meaning as well as flexible and so constructed as to be acceptable. Jeez, uh, to be so constructed as to be acceptable to the principal civilized nations. Esperanto Albold fulfills these requirements. It's a pra it is in practical and daily use all over the world. With this one language, you can correspond or converse with Frenchmen, Germans, Japanese, Brazilians, Arabs, Poles, Italians. In fact, people from any land, knowing lang no language but their own and Esperanto. Well, for heaven's sakes. Now we all know a little bit more. Um, did I mention a date 1964 uh this one is ooh, property for our daily use in school our own home and practical training that's a bit of a declaration uh looks like it was printed in paris but yet oh french german uh, 1952. Lovely thin paper. Okay, so here we have German. Okay, so this is where it switches over. So that's what I was talking about, you know, with the, uh, you'd look in whatever half of the book you need to, to get the answer you need. That is a lovely little book. Okay, and then there are things like these, which are phrase books and, you know, things that we buy when we're about to travel. So not a typical dictionary, you know, usually set up in a lot, like just with the essentials. It's got phrases and so on. And, you know, it's all kind of dumbed down for, for tourists. So Italian, Spanish. Now this is more, okay, this is an actual dictionary. These two are phrase books. This Ukrainian one, um, I when I needed Cyrillic text in some of the things I was working on, this is one that I was pulling pages out of. But it, too, is set up, like, with phrases and so on, banking and drinks and that kind of stuff. So these things are, you know, not hard to find either. Okay. I have a couple of Spanish dictionaries. Look at that. I paid a whole dollar for this one. Now, this one, I don't remember where or when I got it. I clearly took the, the cover off. And I have to say the appeal, it's very tiny print, but all the millions, perhaps not millions, of illustrations. I know that I, in the pages that I ripped out, I fussy cut a whole bunch of these little things, you know, birds and trees and so on. Uh, this, this is already the C's. <laughs> so the A's and B's are gone, baby, gone. So... You know, there's a nice map. I don't know what this pink part is. F 
phrases, famous phrases. I don't know. Um, so again, depending on, you know, maybe a, if a person needs to, to decorate a tag or something fairly small, some of these things would be ideal. And you'll see that I have other illustrated dictionaries coming up. Okay, so what is the saving grace here? Oh, this is very kind of, I want to say cheap, but cheap <laughs> uh, paper. And again, it's just a way to, okay, the first part is English. This part is the Spanish part. So either way, you've got access to uh, a lot of paper in a foreign language. Um, maybe I'll do those guys. Well, let's do these little cuties. Now, some of the, if you've watched some of my haul videos, you will have seen these. Uh, cutest little thing ever, like the size of my hand. Look how cute that is. So it says Barnes & Noble. Oh, this is, oh, I see it just slips into this little cover, into this little plastic protection thing. And who doesn't love miniature books? Sorry, I shouldn't be fumbling around with this while you're waiting. but so cute it's basically the columns are like two words wide <laughs> and of course it's a little short fat book so of course they needed two i'm sure it's oh english french and french english and sewn in signatures is that not precious Boy, these, I'll work on that later. Here is kind of a pocket-sized dictionary. Like, the font is incredibly small. <laughs> it's got the little indexy things on the side, but they're not, like, indents. They're just, uh, but, you know, again, kind of inexpensive paper. It's yellowing just from age. Not even that old, 2008. Could fussy cut those letters. And then this one, of course, is lovely. Webster's new vest pocket dictionary. So, hey, if you've got a vest pocket, this is the book you need. 1951. You could tuck it in right near your uh, pocket protector, your little pen holder. Again, teeny weeny teeny teeny tiny little font oh and i see that it has you know like other information so 272 the metric system uh oh oh my goodness can you see can you see any of that height and weight of man distance between american cities First magnitude stars in order of brightness. States of the United States. Oh my goodness. This is about the size of font that they use on pill bottles these days. Have you noticed? <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Now this pile, these are illustrated dictionaries. Now this one is big and thick. And let's see what the year. This is a Reader's Digest book. Nineteen eighty seven. But why does it say Webster's? Special features and captions. 
Oh, maybe they've just used, okay, it's not a Reader's Digest book, but it has used some content from them. This is kind of nice, describing how um, to, you know, use the entries. And look, 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 look. A lot of them are small and in the margin. And you can see that it has that sort of speckly, uh, whatever this edge is called. Do you need the, uh, you know, uh, a, do you need a castle? Oh no, that's not a castle, that's a church. Uh, what have we got here? How about cheese? How about horns? You can see why back in the day when people had, you know, dedicated libraries, quite often they would also have a dictionary stand because, you know, a book this size, you'd want to open it to a certain page and leave it on the stand. That was before. Mr. Google came into our lives. Shells. So again, so many beautiful images to use. The paper is lovely as well. Just set that one over there. Now, I remember showing this one not that long ago in a haul. Um, this is 1986. Look, look, look. Oh, are you excited by a hot water tank? It's here, it's here. <laughs> oh dear. Now that I want to show you, I can't find it. Anyway. And wheels appear sewn. I hope, because this would be about the size that could work in a journal, you know, a signature pages rather than, maybe not. Kind of hard, I can't really tell and I don't want to really break the spine on it, but again, you name it, it's in here. And then I have just, I think, three or four of these. The Golden Book Illustrated Dictionary. And of course, it's to, this uh, one is PE to SC. And of course, these are geared towards children. Again, really cute. It's, you know, kind of coarser paper, but Cute little illustrations, and again, kind of, you know, more simplistic, brighter, because of the audience it's directed to. Is there a date on this? Mm, 61 is this issue. Okay, last few. Um, let's do this one first. Now, I I, I don't know why the cover, uh, the cover is loose. Looks like it was done in 1973. I, oh, it looks like I've taken some pages out. Uh, this is... French, Paris, 1974. So, lovely paper, tiny font, uh, colored and black and white illustrations. Maybe this is the book that I was doing fussy cut out of. So, there's that, and I can't read that, of course. But as I pull in this next one, pay attention to the name. 
Le Petit La Rousse, I guess. It was, you know, basically saying it's illustrated. So, 1998, 87,000 articles and 3,800 illustrations. Nice and papers. Another big fat book. Oh, I didn't realize somebody was writing in here. Three columns, tiny font. Again, beautiful, beautiful illustrations. I don't know, what is this, time zones? That makes me think so, but it shall remain a mystery. Again, lovely, lovely maps. So, I think you would have seen this one lately. This was obviously, someone bought this at Costco, a French and English illustrated dictionary. So, it's like that other one, the Stoddart Visual Dictionary. Uh, but this one is French and English. Smaller format, all color. And of course, this would be a great size too. And these do look like Sony signatures. <clears throat> yes, there are the threads. Or am I seeing things? There are the threads. <clears throat> and I don't know, to be honest, why I have so many French dictionaries. However, there's this one as well. It's got the little tabs, 1927. And just, I don't know that there's much of excitement in this one. Okay, what is it saying? French, English, English, French. So again, it is, oh, 1936. It is going to be divided half and half. And I will end on the most lovely of all, probably, again, because of this cover. Now, if you watched my, oh, uh, is it day 70 or 71 in the 100 Day Project? you will see me convert a business folder into a French folio. <clears throat> so in that video, I show some of the books that I got from Louise at Forever French. And uh, so there was an agenda, a book from a winery that is all copies. Like, um, I guess it would kind of be the equivalent of using carbon paper. Anyway. Uh, watch the video to see. This was one of the books that I bought from her because, of course, when you're paying for freight across the ocean, um, you kind of want to make it worth your while. So, La Petite, well, Nouveau Petite, La Rousse Illustrated. So this one has... I would say that it's 6,200 illustrations. That, I believe, is maps. So that's 140 maps and whatever. To, I don't know what that is. Oh, tables, maybe. So, oh, look, some scotch tape, too. Salvage. Um, not great shape. The I did end up using the pages that had come out. I ended up using in that folio project. You can see the foxing and the, the you know, the age damage to the, I think, oh, more tape. I think that the, and look at, I'm not sure of the date of this one, but it's clearly pretty darn old. Am I going to have to pull this out right now just to salvage that tape? But it is, you know, it fit very well. Uh, fit very well with the 
uh, French grunge of the kit that I was using and kind of the look I was going for. Look at. You know, if a person had one of these illustrated dictionaries, you could almost get through your whole bookmaking career and not need anything else. I mean, you know, not really, but boy, you sure wouldn't have to look far for much, much else. <clears throat> again, not sure why the pink pages, but again, so many little cute things that could be either punched out plus the, the you know, the very old, old look of the okay I'm looking at it and I still don't get it. <clears throat> so that is the one I wanted to end on. New and old. Anyway, I am sure that I'll find some more dictionaries scattered throughout the house the minute I turn off this camera, but that is... That's pretty well happened every with every uh, what's in my bookcase video. If you're enjoying these uh, this series, I hope you choose to subscribe. If you haven't tuned in to any of the uh, or many of the hundred day project uh, videos, I hope you choose to do that as well. Uh, there are some, I think some, I think I'm doing some things that maybe are a little off the beaten path. Um, Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I know that there are some of you that are faithful viewers week after week, so I want to give you a particular shout out. And um, I hope that there's some happy hunting uh, in your uh, upcoming week because there are many of these books out there waiting to be discovered. And I know that they are clamoring to go home with you or with me. So... We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.